بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate and from him do we seek help All praise be to Allah, the sustainer of all the worlds and blessings and peace be upon our master Muhammad and on all his family and companions Seventh truth The gate of protection and preservation the manifestation of the names of preserver and guardian. Is it at all possible that Allah's attribute a preserver, which protects all things with the utmost order and balance, things in the heavens and on the earth, on dry land and in the ocean, dry and wet, large and small, commonplace and exalted, and, as it were, sifts their results by way of accounting. Is it at all possible that this attribute should permit the deeds and acts of man, man who has been given the lofty disposition of humanity, the rank of Allah's supreme vicegerency, and the duty of bearing the supreme trust, not to be recorded, not to be passed through the sieve of accounting, not to be weighed in the balance of justice, not to be punished or rewarded fittingly, even though his acts and deeds closely pertain to Allah's universal dominicality. No, it is not in any way possible. Yes, the being that administers this cosmos preserves all things in order and balance. Order and balance are the manifestation of knowledge and wisdom, of will and power. For we see that the substance of every created object is fashioned in well-ordered and symmetrical fashion. Not only is each of the forms it changes throughout its life well-ordered, but the totality of these forms is also marked by the same orderliness. We see too that the glorious preserver preserves many forms of all things, the life of which comes to an end when they have performed their function and which depart from the manifest world in the memories of men that are like a kind of preserved tablet or in the form of archetypal mirror. Footnote number 23. See the footnote to the seventh aspect above. He also writes and inscribes a brief history of their life in a seed that is like the result and outcome of the whole. Thus he causes all things to be preserved in mirrors pertaining to both the outer and inner worlds. The memory of man, the fruit of the tree, the kernel of the fruit, the seed of the flower, all of these demonstrate the universality and comprehensiveness of the law of preservation. Do you not see that all the flowers and fruits of the vast spring, the records of their deeds in appropriate form, the laws of their formation and images of their forms are all inscribed into the finite space of a minute sea and are there preserved. The following spring, their record of deeds is set forth in a form of accounting appropriate to them and another vast world of spring is brought forth with the utmost order and wisdom. This demonstrates with what powerful comprehensiveness Allah's attribute of preserver exercises itself. Considering that the results of such transient, commonplace, impermanent and insignificant things are preserved, is it at all possible that men's deeds that yield important fruit in the world of the unseen, the world of the hereafter and the world of spirits, from the point of view of universal dominicality, is it at all possible that they should not be guarded and preserved, should not be recorded as a matter of importance? No, by no means. From this manifestation of Allah's attribute of preserver, it can be deduced that the master of all creation devotes great care to the orderliness of all things that come to pass in his realm. 
he pays great attention to the function of sovereignty and lavishes extreme care on the dominicality of kingship. Thus he records, or causes to be recorded, the pettiest of happenings, the smallest of services, and preserves in numerous things the form of everything that happens in his realm. This attribute of preserver indicates that an important register of deeds will be subjected to a precise examination and weighing. The records of men's deeds will stand revealed. Now, is it at all possible that man should be ennobled with the vicegerency of Allah and his trust? That, as a witness to the universality of dominicality, he should proclaim Allah's unity in the realm of multiplicity, and thus act as a controller and witness by having some share in the glorification of Allah and worship of most beings. Is it possible that he should do all of this and then go to his grave and sleep peacefully without ever being awakened, without ever being asked concerning his deeds, small and great? That he should not go to the plane of resurrection and be tried at the supreme tribunal, no by no means. Or is it possible for man to flee and hide himself in annihilation, for him to enter the earth and conceal himself from that powerful and glorious one, to whose power over all contingencies in the future, the occurrences of past time, each a miracle of his power bear witness, and who visibly creates winter and spring, that taken together resemble resurrection.